We're here with David Yonkai from the LULAC Political Letter just less than one month before the presidential election. Now, Bernie Sanders was in Scranton Saturday for Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump. He'll be in town today. Let's get right into it. David, what do you think of last night's town hall style debate? Well, let me tell you who I think won the debate. Okay. The, pers the people who won the debate were Alec Baldwin and um, Kate from um, <laughs> Kate McKinney from uh, Saturday Night Live because they're going to have so much material in the next like month, probably in the next year. This has made their careers. They probably will be winning an Emmy. So they're, they're the people who won the debate. But you know, seriously, what happens with um, town style debates, town hall style debates is that there's a wild card factor in it. And I always thought that if it was going to be a contentious debate, the question would have came from one of the citizens who was going to ask like a question right out of left field. They were very polite. They, yeah. were, they were polite and they didn't get a chance to talk. Yes. What happened was there was maybe about like maybe five or six questions that came from the audience and years back when George W. Bush ran for president against Clinton in 92, all the people got a chance to ask their questions. That was the famous thing where he was looking at his watch. Yeah, checking yeah. his watch. And they just didn't get a chance, so it was incredible. And the funny thing is, if you take a look at the body language, you know, Clinton, I think, was trying to engage with the people. Trump was lurking, and it was like he was pacing back and forth, and I don't Looked think very that uncomfortable. Him. He did look uncomfortable. Yeah. And I was going to say, if we can pick a winner, I can definitely pick a loser. And I think it was most of those poor folks that were in that audience last night waking, waiting to answer, uh, ask a question. Really? Because not many of them got a chance to, 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 to get their issues addressed. You're 100% right, and they actually prepared, and the questions were vetted, so yeah. They didn't get a chance to do it at all. Well, now let me ask you. Uh, I mean, there's there's definitely an argument to be made that sometimes these debates are almost a waste of time because you're really talking to his base. She's talking to her base. Are we really changing any minds with the debates? Not necessarily, but it kind of reinforces who they are. But it gives people an opportunity to take a look and to see what type of candidates there are. Now we talked a little bit before, a little bit before the show began about the undecideds, but still there are. People people out there that may change their mind, but I think it's pretty much, you know, in stone. 85% of Democrats are going to vote for Clinton, 85% of Republicans are going to vote for Trump, and there's that, like, middle ground right there. Right, well, and, and a lot of folks do seem to be locked in. I think you and I yeah. shared off air that our biggest dismay in all of this is that it's really hard to be undecided. These are pretty point, known yeah. commodities between the two. In our area, uh, do you think that last night's debate moved the needle at all for any of the voters, um, you know, any of the voters right here I don't in think Northeast moved, Pennsylvania? I don't think it moved the needle for Trump, but I think what it's going to do is like in like encourage his base to go out to that rally today. Mm -hmm. And I've, I, I think that he will do very well here in Northeastern and North Central Pennsylvania. In this coverage area, I think he's going to be doing very well because he has a message that resonates with a lot of people. And the big thing in this is going to be turned out. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. Even moving the needle in Northeast Pennsylvania, does it give him Pennsylvania? He has to get people registered. All those people that are going to that rally. The notorious to, ground game that yep. everyone is saying he is so deficient in is, right. might become his Achilles heel. And yeah. now with that video that came out, the Republican Party is pooling money out of states, you know, and those are the ground troops. These are the people that, this is their Super Bowl, you mm -hmm. know? I mean, this is what they live for. And if they're not going to be working for him, then there's going to be a problem. But I think he has a good core here in uh, northeastern Pennsylvania, people that are really diehards, and I feel that tonight he's going to have a good crowd. Do you, what do you think, and uh, you know, if you were a betting man, maybe we, we bet a, a, a cup of McDonald's coffee, what are the chances the third debate comes off? I think so. You think it's going to happen? Oh, yeah, I think it'll come off, sure. Yeah, definitely. All right. Definitely. Yeah, because, well, I mean, you start to wonder, for Hillary, each time she does this, it's just one more chance. And we talk about October surprises. We're really early in October. We're in early in October, but we're 30 days out. I think there will be a debate. Yeah. Do you think there'll be more surprises, though? Oh, yeah. Oh, of course. I, oh, <laughs> it's yeah. Like, there, it's like a bad advent calendar. You're not sure what you're going to open up and find. There's some closet there that's going to open up and spring open, and it's going to be crazier than normal. David, thank you so much for being here. Where can we get more information on you and your blogs? LulacPoliticalLetter.blogspot.com. Perfect, David. Thank you so much. And with that, we're going to send it back.